Hey, it's Jim from Janko here, and today we're going to take a look at doing transitions in the Olive video editor. We have the alpha version of Olive running right here, and before we get started, we're just going to run over here to Firefox, and I'm at this site here called pixels.com, and I'm going to grab some high-quality, royalty-free videos, so let's come down here and look for a few. I like the look of this motorcycle video right here, so I'm going to click on this. And then I'm going to click on the free download here. And thanks, Kelly. So I want to give thanks to the person who created this video. And we have Kelly Lacey. Thank you, Kelly. Looks great. I'm going to save this file. I'll say OK. And let's come and let's grab another video here. So I'm going to scroll down. And let's get a video that's a little bit different. So I think this picture of the field here is pretty cool. So let's grab this. I'm going to grab the free download. Thanks, Jose. Save that. And let's come out here and let's grab one more video. Let's grab an urban video like this one here. I'm going to click that and I'm going to press the free download as well. And thanks, Caleb. This video looks great. And I'm going to save that file. So now that those are saved, I'm going to come into Olive. And let's just come over to our project section and let's import these videos. So let's go to our downloads here. And let's grab all three of these videos. So I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to click and then I'm going to press open. And now we have those videos here in our project section. Let's bring them down to our timeline. So I'm going to grab this first video. So this is the urban video. Then maybe we'll do a transition to the grass. And then we'll do a transition to the motorcycle. Okay, so you can kind of see right now if we were to play this, they are hard transitions. And if I were to play the transition over here, you see it's a hard transition as well. So how do we do smooth transitions here? The first thing you might want to do is come over to this little transition widget, this transition tool. And you'll notice that there's a horizontal rule dividing the cross dissolve and then the linear fade with exponential and logarithmic fades. So the cross dissolve is the only built-in transition for video. And these other three transitions are for audio. So we could come in here and we could use this cross dissolve tool. And you'll see that as you hover over in between clips, you can see that this little shading appears. But if you were to actually grab and try to draw something in there, nothing's really happening. Now, that's because in order to do one of these default fades, you actually have to have some overlap between the clips so they can actually fade into each other. So there are a couple different ways we can go about adding that. Let's go back to our Move tool here. Actually, it's called the Pointer tool. And let's move these clips over to the right for a second. And what we do is actually grab our first clip and we'd shorten it a little bit. So let's just say we want to shorten it that much. And if we grab this other clip here and we shorten this a little bit, and then we move these clips back together, that now gives us a little bit of extra video at the end of this video and the beginning of this one to actually do a fade. So if we come in here and we do a cross dissolve now, we can actually come in and draw exactly the length of the clip that we shortened. So if we came in here and we were to play this now, Let's do it again. My computer was lagging a little bit. Come back in here and let's play that video. You notice that it does a soft cross dissolve into this other clip here. So if we wanted to extend this out even farther, we'd have to actually have more clip to work with. So let's just go and look at going about doing that. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to click this existing transition. I'm going to press delete to remove it. Oops. I had my clip over here highlighted as well. Let's select just the transition and let's delete that. And let's grab these, let's pull them apart a little bit again. And let's just shorten them a little bit more. Make sure only one of these is selected. I'm gonna shorten that and I'm gonna shorten this. Actually, one thing you can do instead of shortening individually, you can actually grab a clip and you can pull it over another one and that will automatically shorten the other clip. So now that we come in here, we can grab our cross dissolve and we can draw, oops, we're going to highlight both of these and we can draw a longer cross dissolve this time. So you can have more of that transition there. So if you watch this, you can see it's cross dissolving. Okay, so that's kind of a nice transition there. Let's play it one more time. Nice. Okay, that's one type of transition we can do. Now, if we wanted to do a transition where we actually dissolve all the way out to a blank screen and then dissolve back in, you can do something similar. I can come back in here and I can grab my cross dissolve. Instead of spanning across two clips like this, I would just hover over the end of the clip and I would pull it one way. 
And now if we play this, you can see that it'll dissolve out. Goes all the way to black screen, then does a hard cut into the motorcycle scene. Let's do it one more time without the lag. So it fades all the way out to black and cuts to the motorcycle. Okay, so we could do the same thing on the motorcycle as well. We could grab it and we could dissolve in from black. So let's do that. If we play this, it should dissolve all the way out to black and then dissolve back into the new screen. Cool. So that works. Now, you can do the same kind of effects with your audio down here. So you would essentially come in here and you would draw these fades. The linear fade sometimes a little harsh. You might do something like an exponential fade. And you could just essentially draw that in like that. And then if you were to play some of the audio, now there's not much to hear between these clips, but you can maybe hear it if I get it close to the microphone. So you can hear the audio fade out from one of these clips and go into the other clip. So I'm going to get rid of that transition for now. So you might feel kind of limited with the effects that are presented with these transitions here by default. Now you can go about creating your own transitions using the effects panels up here. So let me go ahead and just delete these transitions that I added here. I'm going to delete all these. And let's look at creating our own effects. So the first thing I might want to do is I'm going to come in here, I'm going to select this, and you'll notice that we have a couple effects on our clip already. So there's a transform effect by default, and that's a video effect, and then there's a volume and a pan effect by default as well. And you'll notice that up here, if you were to click this, this is the default transition. So there is the cross dissolve here, and then for the audio effects, we have the other three effects. And we can go and add new effects as well by clicking this icon in the upper left corner. So I'm going to add this new video effect and I could choose from all these different things. So I could mess with the colors. We could do different distortions like we could do ripples and swirls and transforms. So let's come in here and let's just take a look at maybe doing a bulge effect just so we can see what this looks like. So we have a bulge here and this is on this clip so you can see that bulge is currently applied to the whole clip there. Now we could change this, we could edit this a little bit, we can move the bulge over to one side so it's off center if we want to do something like that. And you can see how this affects our clip. Okay, so I'm going to remove the bulge effect for now, so I'm going to right click and press delete because we can do a lot of transitions with this default transform pane. And the way we're going to go about doing that is we're going to use the keyframes here, which allow us to transition from one state to another. So if we want to replicate that regular dissolve, which is the default transition here, we could actually do something with the opacity here. So for instance, I could come in here and I could set my cursor, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit, I'm going to hold control in my timeline, I'm going to scroll in, set my cursor where I want the effect to start taking place, let's just say right about here. And what I do is I could come up to my opacity and I could click this little clock to the right and I'm going to enable my first keyframe that way and so notice a couple things happen when I click that. A little dot appears on our timeline here in our keyframe timeline and then these little options appear over here. So we've created our first keyframe at this point in time and then what I can do here is I can jump over to the end of the clip and I can click this middle button here to create a finishing keyframe and what we can do between these keyframes is transition the amount of opacity that appears between these keyframes. So I know that when I'm looking at the normal part of the clip, I want it to be at 100% opacity, but when I jump over here to this last keyframe, I want it to be at 0% opacity. So let me just show how to navigate between the keyframes. If I click the right arrow, it navigates to the first keyframe that we, we hit, and that's where we want our transition to start. I'll click the right arrow again to go to the last transition. This is where we want our transition to end. So at this end point, we want the opacity to be down to zero. And now if I play this, it'll look similar to our old fade out that we had previously. So let me just play that. So you notice that it faded out. Now we could do the same thing on this other end here. We could click this and we could again say where we want the transition here to end. And now that this second clip is highlighted here, then it shows us the effects for that clip. They're different, so if I were to select this one, you can see our keyframes again. If I go over here, there's no keyframes yet, and our opacity is at 100, but I could come in here, I could add my first keyframe at this point in time, and then I can move my timeline to the farthest point left, and I can add another keyframe by clicking this middle button, and at this point, I want the opacity to be at zero. 
And so this will do that fade out of the first clip and then fade in of the second clip. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Okay, so it looks very similar to the cross dissolve that we had previously. It's a little bit more manual, but this is the general process that you go through about creating your own effects in Olive. So let's go and let's create a different type of effect. For now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna come up, I'm going to click on the enable keyframes again, and that's going to delete my keyframes that I have on this clip. So if I click that, it says all your keyframes will be deleted. I say yes, that's okay. And if I come back over to this one, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna click on the keyframe. I'm gonna delete the old keyframes. And let's just make sure we have here. So actually right here, you'll notice that it took the last state we had here with the opacity being completely at zero. So this first clip has no opacity. We're actually gonna to have to correct that. So I'm just gonna take the transform effect and I'm gonna move the opacity up to 100%. And this one over here is at 100% as well. So you'll notice that there's just no transition between these videos, which is fine. My computer's lagging a little bit at the moment, but you get the idea. And let's take a look at maybe making a different type of transition. So we could do something like a swipe. And if I were to come over to this, I might come up to my anchor point here. This is another transform property. And I could create a keyframe here. So let's, let's hit the keyframe on at this point. And then at the end of my clip here, let's do another keyframe here. We want basically to create a swipe. So we want this section of the video when we're over here to swipe over to the left and we want the new one to swipe in from the right so it looks like we're transitioning between those. So one thing you're gonna notice is kind of difficult. If we go to the end keyframe here, we don't actually see our first clip, right? So if we go to the first keyframe in our viewer here, we see the urban setting. But if I go to that last keyframe, we're already on that last clip there. So it's a little hard to actually see what you're doing. What I actually do in this scenario is what I come in here and let's just delete this last keyframe for now. I'm gonna highlight this by clicking on it. I'm gonna press the delete key. And then I'll move my cursor back a little bit. And this will show where I want my end state to be because I can still see that clip. So let's come in here and now that we have our anchor point, let's grab this and let's move this so it starts transitioning. You can see it update in real time in the viewer as I pull this anchor point. You notice the more I increase this anchor point, the more it moves off to the left-hand side of the screen. And when I get somewhere around 1900, it's all the way off the left-hand side of the screen. Now I know this is a ratio of 1920 wide. So if I actually double click on this, I can make it exactly off the screen by typing in 1920 here and pressing okay. And at this point, it's completely off the screen. But if I were to play this right now, you'll see something kind of funky. So it transitions off the screen, but there's still a little bit of clip and it's hard to see because my computer's a little laggy. But if you were to come right here at the end of the clip, Let's see if I can zoom in enough to see it. Well, it's actually kind of hard to see in this point, but um, this if we wanted this transition to happen actually at the very end here, so there's no little delay in the, the background there, I can grab this keyframe that I created and I can move it back to the end of the clip. So one way we could get this exact, so you notice that we're a little off on the right-hand side. We're not exactly at the end of that keyframe. We can right-click on this and let's do our graph editor. So you can see, if I scroll up, zoom out a little bit. I'm gonna hold control, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Okay, so I'm zoomed out, and what we can do is we can come in here, and let's zoom in here, and let's move this right to the exact point where we want it. If we move our timeline here, we move it right to the end of the clip, we can come in here and we can grab this point and we can move it right to that exact section. So now if we were to move between these two, so we can see here, I move to the left and I move to the right, it's the exact end of the clip that we want there. And if we were to get out of this real quick, I'm gonna exit out of our graph editor. We could do something similar on this other end here and we could transition this so as this first clip is moving over to the left, this other clip is moving from the right. So right now you see that it moves over to the left and it hops in there. So let's actually overlap these clips so we can make sure that those transitions are happening simultaneously. I think the easiest way to do this is to separate these clips a little bit like this. I'm just gonna move the video up and I'm gonna move the audio down. And then I'm gonna pull this in here a little bit so they're overlapping. So you notice as the first video here is transitioning out and there's a little bit of delay on my computer. Let's see if I can get the lag out here by starting a little earlier. 
as it transitions out. The other video is already underneath it, but it's not doing any transition of its own. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually jump between my keyframes. Let's see. Let's go to the first keyframe. So this is where a transition starts. So we want the other transition to start at the exact same time. Let's grab this video and pull it over to that point in the timeline. And basically we want one keyframe to start right here and we want the other keyframe to end at the end of this clip here. So with this second clip highlighted, I'm going to come up here. I'm going to click on my anchor point and I'm going to start my keyframe here. So I'm going to enable keyframes. My first keyframe gets dropped at the beginning of the clip. And then I'm going to move my timeline over to this last section here. And I'm going to add a keyframe there. And I'm going to do the same transition, except I'm going to start on the other side. So this first keyframe is really where I want this video clip to be off the screen. So I'm going to grab this. And again, it's hard you know, to see what we're doing because this clip all the way at the beginning of the keyframe goes to the other clip above it. So what I could do again is I could just grab this if I really wanted to. I could move this in here a little bit. And then if I jump to that keyframe, you can see where the clip kind of is at that point in time. And then I could play around with moving this around so I can get this just right. So really what I want this to be doing is I want to be over off to the complete right hand side of the screen. Again, I know what that exact value is. It's going to be negative 1920 because that is the ratio of my video. So I'm going to click negative 1920. And then I'm just going to grab this and I'm going to move it back to the beginning of my clip. So I'm going to grab that little keyframe. I'm going to drag it all the way left. And it, it does mess with the anchor point here. So I'm going to actually change this back to negative 1920. And I know that, oops, so that actually added another. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to come back here and click this keyframe here. So if I go all the way to the left, whoops, that's my right keyframe. My left keyframe is a little bit too far left. So again, let's come in here and let's do this again. So I'm going to come to the beginning of the clip with my timeline playhead. If I click on this and then I come into my keyframe, and I'm going to right click on these keyframes. I'm going to open up the graph editor. So we'll notice that this is my first keyframe here. Now the playhead is right here and that's the beginning of the clip. So you notice that the playhead changes if I pull this and I pull it to the beginning of the clip. My keyframe's here so I can grab this and I can bring it over to that section right there. And that's exactly where I want that to be. And that's okay. So I'm going to get out of the graph editor again real quick. And let's just play this to see what this transition looks like. Let's start it back a little ways. So you can see that as the first clip pulls over to the left, the other one follows it and it does kind of a swipe effect. So that looks pretty good. Now, one last thing I can do to make this a little bit more smooth is I can come in here and I'm selecting my first clip again and I'm gonna open up the graph editor. So I'm gonna right click on one of those dots, I'm gonna open the graph editor. I'm gonna select this first dot here and I'm gonna change it from linear to bezier. And then you see that that curves like this and if I click the second one, I change that to Bezier as well. You can see you get a smooth transition line there and that will make this look a little bit better. So I'm going to close out of that. Now, since we've only done it to the top clip, it's going to look a little weird because the second clip is still going to be doing a linear fade, but let's just see what this looks like for now. Okay, so you see that it transitions in a different fashion where it's not just one smooth speed the whole time across but you notice that there's a little gap here when we get down towards the end of the video. So if we really want this to be smooth and these to come together, we can also change these transitions to Bezier. So I'm gonna come in here with the second clip highlight. I'm gonna to go to the anchor points and I'm going to open the graph editor and I'm going to click on this first one. I'm gonna change that to Bezier and I'm gonna click on the second one. I'm gonna do the same and then I'm gonna get out of the graph editor one more time. And now if we watch this transition, it should be a smooth visually appealing transition. So let's start this. Let's play it. You can see that it kind of swipes and pushes that over in a nice smooth fashion. Now you could do the same transition with a top to bottom or bottom to top. So let's just come in here and just do a quick look at what that might look like. So again, if I come back to um, my top clip here, I have this selected. And if I go to that first transition here, so this is fine, zero, zero, that's okay. The second transition though, instead of 1920, which this got skewed again a little bit, let's put this back to zero. And let's see what this looks like if I come up here. Let's, um again, let's grab this dot here and delete it for now. And let's move our cursor in a little bit so we can see what our video is at this time. 
And then let's see what happens as we start transitioning this value here. And you notice that this is going up. So if we pull this all the way up, our value here is 1080 should be exactly there, knowing the 1080 by 1920 dimensions here. So I'm gonna put this at 1080. That's exactly off the screen. And then let's just, again, let's move this to the right place. I'm gonna put the, the cursor at the end here again. Let's, let's come back into our graph editor. Let's click graph editor here. And let's just move this over to our end there. And so that changed to 1090. Let's make sure we put that at 1080. That's the exact measure we want. And that looks pretty good. And we'll see that this now swipes up. So let's come back here and let's do this from a little farther back so there's less delay. So that swipes up. Now we'd want the second one to do the same thing. So let's come in here. Let's edit this with the graph editor. We don't need this dot here. So let's delete that. And let's make sure that our first dot here at the playhead is no longer gonna be 1920. Let's put that at zero. And let's make this negative 1080, say okay. And let's take a look at what that transition looks like here. So you'll notice that it goes from top to bottom. My computer's a little bit lagging. Okay, 